¿qué tal? Bienvenidos a mi canal. Estoy con Peter Freestone, que fue asistente de Freddie Mercury durante los últimos 12 años de su vida y nos va a platicar algunas historias muy, muy chidas para que se queden con nosotros. Hi Peter, how are you doing? I'm oh, very well, thank you. Very <laughs> thank you very much for this moment. You're very welcome. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> cool, thank you. So uh, on August 9th in 1986, uh, Queen played their last concert with Freddie Mercury as their vocalist in Kevworth. That's how you pronounce Nefworth. it? Nefworth. Okay. Yeah. This meant not only the closure of the Magic Tour, but also the end of a golden age in which the stage was their second home, right? Yeah. So um, around 125,000 people gathered that day. Uh, do you remember um, what was the first thing Freddie said or you heard him say after finishing that last concert? Exactly what he said, I cannot remember, but mm -hmm. I know he was happy the tour was over. All right. Um, he felt that that tour, because you have to remember, it was just big stadiums, it was huge audiences. Yeah. Um, it had taken a lot out of him. He felt tired. He wanted a break. Yeah, but the thing is, nobody, nobody, dreamt that that would be the last show. Mm -hmm. Freddie felt something wasn't right, okay. but that was it. I mean, and maybe, I suppose, at the very back of his head, he had an idea of what it could be. Um, in your blog, Ask Phoebe, I read some of the entries. There were a lot. <laughs> a lot of people like I to ask you things. I still have to do more. I promise, <laughs> I promise I will do more. It's just, I have one enemy at the moment. Uh -huh. And that's time. So, in your entry number 60, you were asked if Freddie went around the house singing Queen songs. Your answer was no. But, uh, how about other artists? Maybe, I don't know, he was a big fan of Presley and Lennon? Maybe he sang a little bit of them? No, not no. really. <laughs> um, he would occasionally, I mean particularly, it was Prince, he would play video. He had a pirate video of a live concert <laughs> and he would play it again and again and again. Um, he would listen occasionally to other artists, Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, um, that sort of thing. And of course, every now and then, earlier on, this was back before he ever heard Montserrat, he would actually listen to the tenors, you know, Pavarotti, Domingo. Yeah. Because voice. he loved the control. Mm -hmm. He loved their control of their voice. So the name of Queen and of course Freddie regained attention since the release of the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, yes. right? So we know that Freddie was a man who paid much attention to any work that had to do with him. And uh, we know the production kept people like yourself close uh, to them for a more truthful story. And yeah. uh, what do you think Freddie would have thought of the film and perhaps in particular about Rami Malek, uh, who played him, of course? I think it was an amazing film. Yeah. Let me get that out at the beginning. It was an absolutely amazing film. Mm -hmm. I understand people complaining about the timeline differences and this and that and something else. Mm -hmm. But you're trying to put 15 years of someone's life into two hours. So, you have to do some mixing up. Um, it also has to follow a Hollywood formula of, course. of amazing highs, incredible lows, yeah. and then an amazing ending. <laughs> um, I really never saw Freddy quite as depressed as you see in the film. In the film, okay. Um, and If I want to be really, really picky, mm -hmm. I would love to have seen Freddie laugh. All right. But on the whole, I think it gives people, people who really didn't have any idea before they saw the film, it gives people an idea of the emotional highs and lows 
that Freddie did go through. I mean, he did go through it like that. Maybe not to the extremes that you see in the film. That's all. But, um, I mean, I was there on production for five months. What was your favorite scene to watch? Uh, I don't know, but there were two that made me cry. Cry? Oh my God, of course, yeah. Um, the scene in Jim Beach's office where Freddie asks to go back to the band. and which, The Freddie you see in that scene uh-huh. is the Freddie I knew. Uh-huh. The one who could be really, maybe not apologetic, okay. but accepting of his the things he's done wrong. Oh, but then when he says, all I know is that if we do not do this show, that whole thing, that was the Freddy I knew. And Rami, Rami worked incredibly hard. Um, and he created his version of Freddy. So that's all that you could ask for. Hola, estoy con Milan, que estuvo en la película de Bohemian Rhapsody. Participó brevemente, pero aquí vamos a entrevistarlo para ver qué nos contesta acerca de algunas experiencias que tuvo en la película. So tell us, uh, how did it feel to be part of a big blockbuster movie? That's actually an interesting question because I've been a fan of Queen since I was really a kid and it guided me through my career because without Queen music I would not be doing any music. Mm-hmm. It was kind of this, like, a, you know, kick spirit, just go on and just go on all the time. And uh, when actually I got this chance to send my pictures to casting on 20th Century Fox, mm-hmm. I thought we will try and we will see and they said yes because I actually do act in the Czech movies. Okay. Uh, I also act in the German movies. I do Nazi because of my face. <laughs> yeah, you're so, super blonde. <laughs> super blonde, so that's that's where I'm figured. And they were they were recording a shooting actually um, part in Munich. Okay. So I fit it in the German part of it. So yeah. So that was cool, yeah. Yeah, you were lucky. That's really <laughs> nice. Cool. Yeah, so did you steal anything from the set, like a souvenir or something? Actually, no. It's <laughs> a shame. <laughs> um, you should have <laughs> something, a wig or whatever. Some, yeah, yeah, I should have. There's been a lot of things and I didn't shame. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Soy Víctor Carré y estamos aquí en Monterrey para dar nuestro show con Fénix y el señor Peter Friston. Oye, Rami Malek dijo en alguna de sus entrevistas uh-huh. que los dientes falsos lo ayudaban muchísimo a meterse en el papel de uh-huh. Freddy. ¿Cómo te preparas tú para entrar en el personaje de Freddy? ¿Qué haces que dices, ya soy Freddy? Para empezar, yo ya estoy dientón de naturaleza. <risa> este, yo sí ya este, no me hice nada, así los tengo. Pero, este, pues sí, yo creo que yo el bigote, por ejemplo, yo siempre uso barba. Okay. Y para los shows me tengo que rasurar y mm. me dejo el bigote. Y eso ya me da como que pues, un cierto toque a, sí. a Freddy, ¿no? La ropa, que también es un... No hacemos una imitación al 100%, pero tratamos de acercarnos un poco. Okay. Este, hay otras bandas que sí lo hacen idéntico, ¿no? Nosotros no tratamos de jugar un poquito también, tratamos de ser una banda también original, tenemos temas originales, entonces estamos tratando de también llevarle a la gente pues nuestra forma de, de ver a Queen y de sonar a Queen, ¿sí me explico? Pero sí, meterme en el papel, pues creo que me rasuro, me dejo el bigote y ya me siento, ¿no? Aparte de, del papel. Muy bien. In October 81, Queen came to Mexico. It is well known that the tour in, the, in our country didn't go that well, but <laughs> however, there is a funny story that happened here in Monterey regarding Freddy. A fan who looked so much like him passed hotel security and made it to his room. They say <laughs> Freddy saw him with humor and gave him a cape as well as two tickets for that night's show. Yeah, I could well believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't uh, physically there? Or In you his heard? room, I was not at that time, no. At that time. But I, yeah, I could really imagine. Freddie loved exciting things, new things. And for someone to actually use their head and do this, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Why not? That, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. hilarious. No, that was that. So, brilliant. do you remember any comments that Freddie did about this? Um, there were more problems in the other show. Okay. In Pueblo. In Pueblo. That than was here. A... Um, here, as far as I can remember, he was smiling. He enjoyed himself. 
So I have a couple pictures just to show you. Uh, maybe you have seen them, maybe you have not. I believe this is. Oh, yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah. you, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And right here we have Brian holding a That's carta right. blanca. Uh -huh, of course. A, a little one. That's, yes. Oh, for me, it's just like uh, gold. And I have another one right here. I believe this is you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking Roger off. Exactly. And then. And then four friends are taking Freddy off. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, the next question would be with the vinyl comeback. I don't know if you're aware that yeah. vinyl has come. Um, and take a, a place in the market. Queen is, a, is in the top 10 most sold albums alongside the Beatles, Fleetwood Mac, Prince, Pink Floyd, and many more. First of all, who would have thought that vinyl is back and well? <laughs> Sales keep going up, and the second surprising part is that classic bands such as Queen are the ones chosen to be listened to in this format. Who, why do you think this is happening? Why Queen? Why not new bands in vinyl? Um, Freddie loved working on vinyl um, because don't forget it wasn't until the late 80s that CDs were becoming popular mm -hmm. and the thing is if you think about it an album cover as in <laughs> vinyl mm -hmm. was a decent size to work on yeah. to create the images for when you were trying to work something yeah. that big instead of a of proper size, uh -huh. it became much harder. Um, For the artwork. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, it's so much nicer to have a vinyl collection. Yeah. All these big things taking up room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We have streaming devices and when the iPod came, oh, everyone yeah. was like shocked that all of their music could be in a single piece, yeah. right? Of and now you have this little... USB, USB thing and you've got a thousand songs on it. I yeah. mean, what is that? Yeah. They were pieces of art. Exactly. The, 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 the cover of the album was an extension of the music. Yeah. But that doesn't happen anymore. No. So last question. According to you, to you, Freddie didn't like to live in the past or the future. He was always present here and now, yeah. right? Uh, but if you, Phoebe, could go back to uh, relive any moment during the years you accompanied, accompanied Freddie, which one would it be and why? So, a moment you treasure, maybe. I don't know, there's too many, really. <laughs> um, because my life was 12 years of... There was something amazing every day. Um, Maybe something funny or... I suppose I will always, always remember, it will always come back to me when it was a ballet gala at the Royal Opera House mm -hmm. and Prince Andrew was there. Okay. And in the interval, Freddie was introduced to Prince Andrew. <laughs> and Freddie had on this sort of silk scarf. Um, and it was the end of it was hanging in his glass of champagne. <laughs> he didn't realize. And Prince Andrew had a plate of strawberries uh -huh. and cream that he'd eaten half of. And, and then Freddie said, Oh, Phoebe, take the plate away. He's, he's had enough. You can see that. And Prince Andrew said to Freddie, You called him Phoebe. I know him as Peter. <laughs> Because Freddie didn't know I'd met him years before. Oh, right. So I took that away, and then Prince Andrew turned to Freddie and just pulled out the scarf <laughs> and wrung out the champagne <laughs> onto the floor and says, I think it's better this way. <laughs> That's so nice. that, yeah, that I would always. That's would a great story. Thank you for sharing. All right.